Okay, flight school lesson one. Uh, this is, video is gonna coach you through mainly taking off uh, off the wind and going in a straight line off the wind and taking off upwind and going in a straight line upwind, which are the two rudimentary components of flight. Uh, I'm gonna be walking you through these 38 second clips in ultra slow motion because a lot of stuff goes on really quickly. Uh, essentially the programming for the technique happens so fast you can see part of it but not all of it. And if you're missing, you know, any of the parts and you're not getting the whole, you're not getting the full picture. So uh, breaking down footage really slowly is critical. Okay, so off the wind takeoffs are pretty much the entry level on this stuff just because it seems easier to chase apparent wind. Uh, going on a reach, curving into downwinds, you're able to bear off a little bit and use that as yet another way to ease and keep the boat out from underneath you. Uh, it's definitely how I learned how to foil. Uh, and uh, it's not necessarily the most comfortable, but it's the most uh, filled toolbox you're gonna have available for uh, taking off when you don't know exactly what's going on. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through the setup here off the bat. First of all, obviously be going in a straight line, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, get your feet into the hiking straps. Uh, the far hiking strap is often more comfortable. In this case, I'm kind of going for speed, so I'm using the near hiking strap and droop, droop hiking off the side. What's essential is don't just sit in the middle of the boat. I mean, you do need to hike. Um, you need stability, and you can't do that without hiking. Uh, you're going to need to maintain basically a set hiking position so that you've got stability in play. Don't expect to be able to hike the boat flat or really do anything kinetically uh, with your body that isn't at the least ancillary. Okay, so I'm sitting on the second pad here and I'm beginning to pump a little bit with the main sheet just to build speed. I'm just flying a hull a little bit, which in takeoff is okay, but you will need to get the hull underneath you ultimately. Here I'm starting to take off and you're gonna see me do a big ease and a bear off just to stop the boat from healing over to lured. And there we go. Now it's rolling over a little bit to weather and that's where you want it because if you're healing over to lured, you don't really have much control. You're sort of at the mercy of the next puff. Whereas you're healed over to weather even slightly, you have the initiative. The boat is sort of automatically rolling over on top of you. So all it takes is one more pump and you can set your heel angle here. I'm desperately trying to get it back level actually. I'm gonna ease and bear off a little bit, easing here. Now it's rolling to weather, and there we go. We're in flight and we're moving forward. And actually, we've got some initiative here. I'm starting to round up and build speed. I'm gonna go for another ease here. Anything, really, to keep the boat level. So when you're flying in a straight line, the trick to a degree is to be easing and cheating on and easing and cheating on and just trying to maintain a straight line once you're in motion. So here we are. Now I'm actually up and running. Because there are so many things to unpack in this process, I'm going to go through this a couple times and I'm just going to flag different things that I haven't mentioned before. Um, using this jibe is a pretty decent preamble for it. Um, duck during jibes, by the way. Note that I'm easing off, I'm getting myself situated. I'm just trying to steer in a straight line while I get myself into the hiking straps. I've got the main sheet back in my hand, I've got the tiller in position, and now I'm starting to slide my feet into the hiking straps. I've got my butt on pad number two. If you're running a low rudder lift setting, you can get your butt onto pad number one up forward. If you're running really high rudder lift, you'll want to get it back onto pad number three. Now note I'm starting to pump a little bit and ooch a little bit just to build speed as I get myself prepped going into the straps. Now my feet are in the straps there and I'll hike out. I do a little ooch there and I'm gonna be pumping and easing and pumping and easing, just sort of flapping the wing, trying to build boat speed. Here we go, ease a little bit, pumping a little bit, hiking a little bit. I'm working a little bit of kinetics just to sort of get a little extra jerk going forward. And the other thing, uh, Mike Zani noticed this, if you're rocking the boat a little bit, you're actually breaking the suction with the water. So if the last thing that's holding you in is actually the static tension from the water, uh, bouncing the boat around a little bit will actually break that connection and get you out of the water. As I'm going along right here, 
note that I'm not hiking half as much because now the dominant factor in play, I'm not ooching half as much, the dominant factor in play is just your main sheet and your tiller. And you want to be biased towards using your main sheet because the tiller is such a powerful tool that you really only want to use it when the main sheet won't do enough. So if you can't ease enough to get the boat level as the puff hits you on a downwinder, you need to bear off. But only use that as a, as a second resort. Your first resort should be to dump main. Your second resort should be to dump main and hike at the same time. Your third should be to bear off as well. Besides that, okay, I'm pulling in a little bit of main. Now I've added a section on actually making good progress downwind uh, as a further addition to uh, just taking off and getting going in a straight line. Uh, in this segment here, now that I'm up and flying, I'm going to start to carve it downwind. And I use the word carve quite advisedly because one doesn't just aim on a heading in this boat, as with virtually every other apparent wind-driven boat, like uh, you know, doing the wild thing downwind in catamarans, uh, sailing downwind with an A-sail in skiffs, all of this stuff is driven by apparent wind, and so it's heavily velocity-driven. So velocity is your only friend in making true progress on the foils downwind. So what I've done here is I've got going relatively quick on the foils in the first place so that I'm carrying a good amount of apparent wind. And now I'm starting to head downwind because now I'm able to drive my apparent wind on the sail down quite deep. I'm sailing at about 45 degrees to dead downwind. And the point is that I'm still operating at a close hauled angle. I'm able to do that uh, for a number of reasons, one of which is the most efficient way the sail operates. And for another, it's the way the boat remains balanced because I've still got a lot of force coming off the mainsail working against the healing moment of my body. Oh, sorry, against the riding moment of my body. The healing moment of the sail is the other force in play that keeps me level. So I'm hiking and the sail, because it's sheeted in so much, is actually keeping me balanced. And I'm able to control the roll of the boat by just hiking more or easing the sheet. And look at that, I'm going very deep and actually at a pretty high speed. You can even see it in this slow motion version. Now I'm gonna go for a jibe here because I'm an idiot. Uh, and I'm not going to pull off the foil jab because I'm not really trying, but that's kind of the upside of this boat is it comes down so square that, you know, if you're not trying to do a foil drive and you just botch it, it doesn't really bite you, which is giving me a decent amount of time to practice my foil jibes. Okay, going through. And obviously, as I come through the jibe, uh, I'm going to try and retain as much speed as possible, but really, I'm going to have to do a light takeoff again. So I'm going to have to round up again and uh, build a little bit of speed. Not that much. But essentially, you get speed first and then depth. Don't just try to foil dead downwind because you can, but it is super unstable. Okay, lesson two, upwind takeoffs. Um, this is similar, but you're going to be working the stability relationship between yourself and the sail by way of sheeting a lot more. Uh, essentially, I mean, it makes sense you're going upwind, you've got the most lateral force on the sail, so you really need to leverage weather heel as much as possible in order to keep uh, an edge in. I call it an edge uh, because it's a similar dynamic to uh, going fast on skis. Uh, essentially, if you're just standing upright on the skis, they slither around, but if you get an edge in, you're basically in control. You've got a firm rail to ride on. Uh, let me go for a tack here. Actually, uh, foiling roll tacks, if you notice, I'm just getting my body across pretty quickly and speeding through, and I'm just cashing in um, all that velocity to get through the tack really quickly and maintain flow on the foils on the other tack. I get the sense that that's the trick to pulling all foil tacks as well, is just getting across really quickly. Same sort of thing. Anyways, setting myself up in the hiking straps, I'm hiking like mad to pull off an upwind takeoff just because I'm going to be starved for stability. I am bearing off slightly just to get yet more velocity and pop up as quickly as possible, but I'm still actually on a slightly upwind heading. I'm pumping a lot, again, just for the sake of velocity, and you'll notice I'm allowing myself to heal the lure just a little, just to disconnect the hulls. I'm touching, I'm touching, and now I ease, and I do something called a roll pop here where I ease and sheet back on just enough so that the boat comes up and then rolls over on top of me, and as it's doing that, I then sheet back in 
and that arrests the roll but locks in my heel angle to weather. Now I'm leveled off. I've done that basically a couple times. I've sawed back and forth, but now I'm actually on a pretty set heel angle of about meh, six degrees heeled over to weather, and I'm starting to carve up wind. And essentially, whenever I feel like I'm getting rolled over to leeward at all, I just ease a little bit. And whenever I feel like I'm rolling over to windward too much, I just sheet in a little bit. And you'll note it's a really refined game. I'm just maintaining my hiking angle. I'm barely steering at all. As with uh, the other clip, I'm going to go through this a couple times just to uh, make it clear some of the other nuances that are going on here. You'll note that while I'm in a set, set hike angle here, I've actually rolled my torso back to get through the takeoff as quickly as possible. I'm actually almost onto pad three just while I'm trying to take off. And the reason why I want to do this is to trim the whole boat bow up and sort of force it to pop up uh, more than naturally. So I'm pumping... I'm easing and I'm rolling my body back and bam, I'm already up. And now I'm going to start to normalize my body position once I'm in a consistent flight because uh, while that's really useful for taking off in the first place, uh, it is actually going to screw up your level flight a little bit. And in general, the boat foils upwind slower than it foils downwind. So you want your body positioning to be a little bit further forward or you're going to stall. Usually when I head onto an upwind, uh, if I'm just rounding up, from a downwind to an upwind, I actually ooch my body forward, and that does makes all the difference. Again, observe here, just look at the leech of the sail, the trimming back and forth. That is virtually everything. This clip here, purely by dint of being a closer camera angle, uh, unpacks a lot of the handwork that goes into just playing the main sheet a little bit. You notice that I just did a bicep pump there. And that works, but sometimes you need to hand over hand. Look at how my tiller hand occasionally comes into play. I've just taken it up there and that enables me to reach for it again. And yet the tiller's barely moving. That's one of the more refined things to learn here. See, I've got it locked in the tiller. I can go for another reach and yoink, in it goes. Um, these gloves I was wearing on that day weren't awesome. They were kind of slippy. So a lot of the time I had to do some sort of bizarre stuff with my hands. But in general, you want to hand over hand through the tiller. So cavitation is a pretty rare event. In this case, it was driven primarily by really cold water. This is a couple degrees Celsius. Um, and the water seems to be more inclined to cavitate in cold water. It's been a known event in the moth class for a long time. Uh, and while it's not very common, it's uh, this clip itself showcases the way to deal with it particularly well. Uh, the UFO, as opposed to being inclined to cavitate on the rudder, whereupon it'll spin out, instead is more inclined to cavitate on the main foil, where it'll simply bear off. So what we're going to see here is a great big burst of white water on the main foil where it overloads and burns out. Yep, there it is. We're always starting to cavitate. And immediately when you see that happen, you'll feel yourself sort of start to dismount bear off and steer into the skid and that'll reattach flow onto the main foil undo the cavitation and boom there we go again so you see that white line in the water there that's the extent of the cavitation event and all it did was bear off into it and just essentially get the flow reattached and kill off the bubble on the foil now i'm back to re-establishing my weather heel i've got to ease i've got to hike rolling the weather rolling the weather and i'm already starting to there we go just play the sheet and keep myself at the very least dead level, if not healed over the weather a little bit. And there we go. Now I'm just cooking. Now I've got all the control because the boat's leaned over on top of me. And that's that.